All right, guys. Great highlight today. And it's about, hey, when you shop for a car, you listen to one dealership and one salesman and say, hey, must be a good price. You don't know it's a good price till you're shopping around. Compare and contrast. Same thing with trading. I've been telling people this for years. It's the way I was taught. How do we find value? You got to compare it to something, right? If there wasn't ugly people, there wouldn't be good looking people. So you have to compare and contrast. In the NASDAQ is a good comp because it's a stock index. It's not going to chart the same as the S&P minis. For instance, if the NASDAQ does this, the ES isn't going to do exactly the same thing. Because there's different stocks that make up the average. So when we get into, let's tighten this up a little bit, we had a pretty dramatic sell-off in the NASDAQ more than the Dow, Russell, or ES this morning after the open. And it happened right in here. We had said, be careful, sell stops below there. Bam, they cracked them. Same thing like below there. You look at some of these boxes. There would have been buy stops above there, but it never got up there. You look at this box once it left it. But either way, this was a pretty deep sell-off. Now, this is the NASDAQ. The ES wasn't as weak. Now, it did come down a little bit. So the NASDAQ did this, and the ES kind of did this. Didn't go down as much. Neither did the other two indexes. But you're not going to know to ask that question, like, why isn't the ES going down? You're not going to ask that question unless you're keeping an eye on something else, compare contrast. So we've seen the general weakness in the NASDAQ. So before you could get long buying what might be stronger and implement that bullish idea of opening a long position, you can't just, oh, this is weaker. Let me just buy the S&P. Life is good. You still got to qualify it, maybe a little order flow uh, or a head fake that you could see in the NASDAQ. What we had here was potential buy stops above 60 was the price. And they scooted below this box and came right back. Well, once I identify this box, like everybody should, you take the middle and the middle is not arbitrary. In fact, the middle if you guys remember, it was like 52 even. And if you can get through, I think it was more like down here. If you can get through 52 even, they have a chance of eventually taking out these 60s. Well, the rubber band stretch, so it gets above 60, comes back, holds the middle, and then they were off to the races. The point is, even before this, there was a moment that qualified opening a long position, taking advantage of this compare contrast, saying that the ES was the strong one. And you're not going to see it on this chart because it happened on our puke tool. Our puke tool, if you're wondering what the hell is a puke tool, puke is a word synonymous on the floor with people that exited a losing position. And so what you want, anytime you get long, what you would love to happen are other people who were long Puking. When you're long, if you ask people that don't know what they're talking about, if you were asked a bunch of people, hey, when you're long, you want a lot of people long with you, everybody would say yes. No, you actually want less longs. Not no longs, but less longs. Less longs equal less sellers. Less sellers, easier chance to go up, whether it's the price of a car or the S&P index. So we've got we got that when you see it go green here and that's kind of what it did what it's doing now is kind of what it did on these lows right here and it was right there and there were also you see these red boxes there's a lot of noise in red boxes and purple boxes because we're so slow but it's never this noisy like that noisy meaning all these red and blue, red and purple on top of each other. But back in this circle right here, you had two big sellers, which we put red rectangles over. So if you think about it, you get longs that puke, which means there's less of them. You get two big sellers of over a hundred or more. 
and they'll show a red box. And you're looking for a reason to play ultimately what's the stronger product belong the stronger product and watch the weaker product so it doesn't continue to go down, especially if it shows you it's getting through levels that could create a turnaround. Because if the weak one goes up, then you got a nice um, idea executed in the strong one. When the weak one gets strong and you're already long the strong one, you're in good shape. Now remember, today isn't one of these days that just pops up to your target. Everything's a drift. It's still key to take a minimal amount of heat and have it go your way SAP. So this all surfaced down in here in real time to highlight a location. Doesn't matter if you're wrong. It matters that you had things line up to execute an opinion. So going back in this highlight, if you don't compare and contrast, you're not gonna know how to answer or ask the question, which one's stronger. If you don't know how to read order flow or you wanna see big sellers come in and the price cannot go down, because if you ask a group of people who don't know what they're talking about, hey, you wanna see selling or buying when you get long? Buying, everybody would yell. No, you wanna see buying chase. You wanna see selling that gets filled and it's big and price doesn't go down. The best metaphor that I've ever used was I punch a guy in the face and he doesn't flinch, I'm running the other way. So you're looking for those moments of punching the market in the face and it doesn't move. Sellers punch the market in the face and it doesn't mean or it doesn't move, it means it didn't go lower. When sellers punch price in the face and it doesn't go down, it means it didn't flinch. And it's just a probability for price to go up sellers and price can't go down conventional intuitive wisdom throw it away in trading and in this industry you have to look at the flip side ah why didn't i think of that those are the things you want as you learn and as people come into this program one of the top reasons why people come to my room and to this website is you sounded different than anything else they learned out there and I'm not saying everything else out there is bad or wrong or whatever. It's just I was brought up through the floor and then through a prop firm. I was trained the right way from the beginning. And so you probably don't, it's like any industry. Most people in every industry don't know what they're talking about. But anyhow, you want to get down to, ah, it makes sense when it's explained that way. Because you would think intuitively sellers you want to sell it. No, sellers and it can't go down. You want to buy it. And then understanding why. So it's all about location. And there's a lot of people out there also that teach opinion creation first, up or down, up or down. Where's it going? Up or down, up or down. Screw that. Where do you get long if you think it's going up? Where do you get short if you think it's going down? You work on your opinion and your ideas, certainly. Work on location first, flip it around because people try to teach opinion creation, idea creation. Here's how you know it's going to go up or down, but they never get around to executing and pulling the trigger. Well, that's the most important part. You could have a great idea, but if you're in a bad location, you'll lose money and be right. There's nothing worse than being right and losing money. You want to be wrong and make money, but being right and losing money means you're taking like a profile. A profile has a lot of sex appeal. There's nothing wrong with using a profile. It's really good stuff. But there's something wrong if that's all you use to make your trading decisions and location and execution and everything. Because it's, it's good at giving you an idea where the market might go, but not the when moment. And then the risk management element of it. So you could be long. It's like, well, where do I go with this? You could be long for some sort of market or volume profile setup. When do you get in and when do you get out? Doesn't answer that question and that's not i'm not a um, real proficient market profiler by no means but i talk to a lot of people who are and i always make that comment and a hundred percent of them agree with it the weakness of profile is while it gives you a good idea where the market might go it doesn't give you a good idea of when it might go and the location and the when is important
If you don't ever learn where the trigger is on a gun and when you pull it back, a bullet comes out, you never learn that. Well, then what good is the gun? You got to know where that little trigger is. Subscribe to the room. I get over a thousand. We get do some live stuff on the YouTube channel. Not the room, but the uh, YouTube channel. I don't like doing the videos. You know, you watch a lot of these videos and people are subscribe to my channel. Press here, press this, press that. I don't think I need to do that. Most people know what to press. So subscribe, but uh, just remember that simplicity is not basic.